We have an array of game objects that represent the cannonballs our player can fire from their cannon. The maximum number of cannonballs the player can have active at any one time is represented by the max cannonballs variable, which is currently set to 3. Whenever we loop through an array to perform an action on the array elements, we must always use the correct count of elements. Otherwise, we risk not acting on all of the elements, or worse, trying to access array elements that don't exist, which results in an error. We are going to create a loop to update each of the cannonballs, so we'll get some practice looping. First, find the update method, where you place the code to respond to controller and keyboard input. Inside update, look for the code you wrote that calls clamp on the rotation angle. Below that, add a new line, and then the following. Update cannonballs. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. This is a method call like any other, except for one crucial difference. There is no such method as update cannonballs. If there was, our job would be easy. But the method doesn't exist yet. We are going to create it from scratch. Like creating your own class, creating your own methods is mostly about improving the reusability of your code. But it is also about organizing your code in a logical way. Typically, if a single method gets very long, it is a good idea to break it into smaller methods. That is what we'll do here. Scroll to the end of the update method. The ending curly brace will be just under base.update. Click on the line just below that curly brace. You'll know you're no longer inside update if the method selection box above the code window is grayed out. The cursor is still inside the class but outside any particular method. This is where we want to add our own method. Below that line, add a new line, and then type the following. Public, void, update cannonballs. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly brace. You have started the method definition for update cannonballs. Now, let's add some code to make it do something. Below the left curly brace, add the following line. For each, open parenthesis, game object, ball, in, cannonballs. Open curly brace. If open parenthesis ball dot alive close parenthesis open curly brace ball dot position plus equals ball dot velocity semicolon. We're doing a lot here, so let's go through it. The first line is going to loop through all of the game objects in the cannonballs array. Earlier, we used a for loop for the same effect. This is a different way, called a for each loop. It has the benefit of not needing to explicitly create a counter variable or create any conditional to stop the loop. Of course, if you wanted to create a conditional, or counting pattern that didn't loop through each object in the array, then a for each loop isn't the best choice. But for a simple loop through an array, it's safe and easy. It creates a variable called ball inside the loop. Ball represents whichever game object array element we're currently looping through. We act on ball as a single object, and the loop will execute whatever code we perform on ball 
on every game object in the array, one at a time. Inside this loop, we've added a conditional that checks if the cannonball's alive flag is true. You'll notice we do not use the double equal sign to check if ball.alive is equal to true. If you're checking Boolean, that is, true versus false values, you can use a shortcut. If ball.alive is equal to if ball.alive is equal to true. And so, if it is true, we change the position of the cannonball by its velocity. Since this code is run at least once per drawing call, the rapidly changing position will make the cannonball appear to move across the screen. This loop will update each cannonball and make it move across the screen by its velocity. If you've been counting curly braces, you'll notice we don't have enough right curly braces. And if you try and build and run right now, you'll get an error. Below the velocity addition you just wrote, add three right curly braces. One, two, three. That will close the if loop, the for each loop, and the update cannonballs method. Just a quick note about velocity and timing. You'll notice that we are simulating movement by adding a fixed value, velocity, to our position. If you consistently add this value several times a second and draw the results, you'll get motion. But what does that number really represent? By default, games made in XNA Game Studio used fixed step timing. The XNA framework will attempt to call update 60 times every second. The velocity values, therefore, indicate how far the object will move in world units in 1 60th of a second. This makes it easy to handle movement and other updates, since the amount of updates per second is known. You have the option of using a variable time step to get more control over the timing of your game. But for our tutorial, fixed step timing, the default timing mode in XNA Game Studio, will work just fine. Now that we have cannonballs updating each update call, let's create a way for the player to fire them.